It's the most wonderful time of the year. And on this week's Titans All Access, we share with you some of our favorite things. There's no bee stings or dog bites when it comes to the king. You won't want to miss our conversation with Derrick Henry. Javon Curse loves the Titans fans, and Titans fans love the freak. And Jarrell Casey talks about his favorite moments from his Titans career. All of this and so much more as Titans All Access starts now. The monster, Derrick Henry, sacked the John Evans, A.J. Brown to the house, Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Merry Christmas and welcome to the Bet MGM studio and a special edition of Titans All Access with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. We're so glad you're with us as this is Titans All Access's edition of our favorite things. And unlike every other favorite things episode, you all get nothing, but we're excited to share with you some of our favorite things, especially within the Tennessee Titans. Well, you get a great show. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. No cars, but a great show. And as we talk ball presented by Duncan, one of our very favorite Titans of all time, number 99 himself, Jarrell Casey. Absolutely. He retired over this past summer. It was so great to see him and honor the career that he had with the Titans. He's definitely one of our favorite players. Let's talk ball with Jarrell Casey on this special edition of Titans All Access. One of the original insiders, Jarrell Casey. It is so good to see you. What's up, what's up? It's been too long. Man, way too long. It has been, it has been too long. All right, so I got to get something on the table right now. Are you really going to school? Going back to school. Definitely wouldn't have thought I'd be doing it, but I uh, made a promise to the wife and that I'll do it. So when I left school, I was doing sociology. Okay. So I'm thinking that if I'm going to finish sociology or go back and do broadcasting. I would love to get back into a little bit of broadcasting and doing that. The first thing I want to do is make sure I graduate from Well, college. they have a great broadcasting school yes, at sir, the best. They, number one. They've put out number a lot one. of great broadcasters. Number one. What's the signature Jarrell Casey play if you meet someone in, in school and they say, hey, weren't you an NFL player? If you told somebody, go look me up, what's the play you want them to see? I would have to go back from the play, playoff game from uh, to what? 2019 playoff game against um, Baltimore Ravens. Um, trying to make every play possible to get to that next that next stepping stone to get to a Super Bowl. I'll have to say that that Lamar Jackson play strip sack fumble. You don't get him at first. No. And you just you will not stop. Just before that play, I believe I had missed the sack earlier, right before that. And so I'm just like, you, you, there's no way you're gonna let him. I show you in this game. You want this more than he do. And that was the whole mindset that I was going into that game. And so you know when he pulled that ball back down and tried to tuck and do whatever he was gonna do. I was like, oh, forget the sack, go for that ball. And that's, you know, everything else was written in history. What is Jarrell Casey most proud of in his career as a Titan? Um, the biggest thing I'm proud of is just the work I did off the field. I think that's the biggest thing is uh, when you go out there and you put the work in on your, on your own and you invest in going to the community, meeting the people personally, that's, that's, when, that's when you know you're doing your job the right way. Have you ever stopped and considered how much Titans fans love you? I, I stop and think about it all the time. It's, it's nothing like it. A lot of times guys, they don't recognize who you are with the, cause you got a helmet on all the time. So when you, when you're able to go out in the community, put your face out there, you're doing the work. So people's constantly being able to see and they start to recognize you outside of football. I think that's the best thing. Now your name and number are in the record books and go down as part of the history. As somebody who loves the game and loved it when it was a little kid, is it mind blowing? It's definitely mind blowing to be able to make a career out of that is definitely a blessing. Like I used to always tell my buddies and them, yeah, I'll make it to the NFL, I'll make it to the NFL. Yeah, every kid says that. But to actually get it done and to do it for 10 plus years, to just think back on it like, shoot, I put a lot of work in to get to this position and get to this place. Um, so it feels great to be able to say, you know, I'm ending it on my own terms. And, and you can walk through this walk door anytime, anytime I want, you know? with your family, with, you're healthy, but you took the blessings and really made something out of it. And that's what it's all about. The Lord put you in positions to take advantage of, you know, he, he blesses you for a reason and it's up to you to take advantage of it. I can go out there changing lives. I can go out there and make something better for myself, make something better for me and my family is where, you know, now that mind has to start driving towards. We sure do love number 99. But you know who else we love, Mike Keith? The Freak. The Freak. We're going to hear from him when we come back to this very special edition of Titans All Access. Our favorite things this weekend. The Freak. 
Welcome back to Titans All Access in the Bet MGM studio. Mike Keith, Javon Kurth means so much to so many people. What is one of your favorite freak memories? Well, one of my favorite things about working for the Titans was actually April of 1999, sitting in the parking lot, hosting the first ever draft party for the Titans when we selected Javon Kurth. It was the middle of April, but it was like 35 degrees and yet everybody went nuts when we drafted him because he was an SEC player. He was nicknamed the freak. Everyone knew we needed a pass rusher. And I just remember seeing Titans fans go crazy for the first time as Titans fans. That is my favorite memory of Javon Curse, even though there were so many throughout a playing career where he made a difference in so many people's lives. As a matter of fact, Javon Curse made a lot of people Titans fans. All right, so when you come back here, I know you look at things differently when you get over 40. It's hard to believe the yeah. freak is over 40. I know, right? But, <laughs> but, you're, but you look at things differently. Do you realize how many people became Titans fans because of Javon Curse? Do you realize how many young people had a picture taken with you on a Titans caravan, or you came to their school, or you were the first game they ever, that you made the big play the first game they ever went to see. Do you feel that? I don't, I mean, I don't feel it, but I get reminded of it. Like, I don't just run, I don't run around like, oh man, like I made that person become a fan. Like, I would say because of social media presence, like people like have that, way a way to reach out to you and let you know these things so like i get messages people tell me like um like you're the main reason why i started playing this position like i, I named my kid after you and all these things like that or whatever i mean it's it's it's, it's very humbling and then it's just a it's just a reminder like um like what i was out there on the field doing like it, it didn't go nothing went unnoticed you have seen the titans play some this year yes what have been your overall thoughts about this 2021 Titans team. Personally, it reminds me of a lot of the things we started started back in 1999, 2000, 2001. It's just, it's fun. It looks like it's fun playing football around here again. Not just on one side of the ball, but on all on all aspects of the game. Now, what do you mean by that? You got to get specific. You can't just throw that out there and they just just leave it hanging. What do you see that reminds you of those days? I mean, as far as they got guys making plays all over the place, I'm speaking like as far as defense. Defense, personally, I mean, I'm not a defense extraordinaire, but I was a defensive end yeah, pretty yeah. good. Yeah, I did that a little bit. But I mean, as far as like defense win championships, and like they look like they look like they're having fun on defense again. You got you got KB. He's back. He's picking things off. He's returning stuff. You got Simmons destroying stuff up the middle and then you got Landry's coming off the side coming off the end it, it just looks fun it, it looks like you can like plug like any one of my guys from my era back in there and we can just get in there and do the same thing when you watch Landry rush the passer what do you see I see he's he's coming to his own like I've been watching from day one like, of course when they drafted him they everyone like reached out to me like hey what do you think about this kid um he's gonna be the next you or whatnot I'm like I'm sure we can wait and see it uh, we'll see like the proof is in the pudding but then after these like past couple years the guy he he has a motor and basically like that's that, that's basically like how I play like um I had my skill set I had speed I had get off but on top of that I just I was persistent and that's what he does. Like he comes, he brings that intensity like all game. That's what he's doing. On top of that, they're doing a pretty good job on the back end. The, the linebackers doing a good job of doing what they got to do and the DBs are, are holding things down. So that makes your job up front that much easier and vice versa. It works the same. If you're doing the job, getting pressure, not giving the quarterback a lot of time and you can like not open up big holes for the run game, the back end is gonna work out. So tell me this, what's it like to see a guy you played against in Mike Vrabel as the head coach of your former team? What's what's that feel like? No, that's that's really awesome. It just it just shows like it just shows like where like like guys were into different things. Like say like I would never thought like certain guys that I played with would be into coaching because I thought they were either just gonna play or do something else and not and just be done with whatever. But like seeing someone like Vrabel, like he was he was on 
he was on the Super Bowl team, like a, a dynasty. He was on a, like on a dynasty and got a lot of coaching success under his hands by um, playing and coaching with Bill Belichick. And now it's just now he's just putting what he did. He's putting it to use, which as a player, it makes you like follow that, like wants to be more like more of a player, be more like accountable for that person because you've seen that person. This person won Super Bowls. This person did he did he he did the walk. So now he's just not talking it. Like he, now he just wants to just pass it on. So someone like Mike Vrabel, this I, I see no other reason than to just go out there and give this guy all you have. You would have liked to have played for Mike Vrabel. Definitely, definitely. Why? It's just a. I mean, the, I think the first time I saw something. I saw him get out in the drill with some of the football players, whatever. Like a coach that does that, like you gotta, you gotta like let's let's go, like let's go win this thing, baby. I get to sit down with the freak on defense coming up next on this special edition of Titans All Access. Amy Wells sits down with the freak on offense. The King Derrick Henry, certainly one of our favorite things about the Titans. He's next on Titans All Access. Welcome back to this special edition of Titans All Access as we focus on our favorite things. And certainly Derrick Henry is one of our favorite things because he's the best running back in the NFL. But it's also because the King is a better guy than he actually is football player. And that's really saying something. Amy Wells shows you why in this week's Nissan Insider. You have won a Heisman. You've been a pro bowler, you've been all pro, you've been offensive player of the year. We're pretty much running out of awards to give Derrick Henry. Do you have more personal goals beyond all of those awards? I don't really try to uh, think about like personal goals. It's just like, how can I be better, you know, as a player, you know, to help my team, you know, each and every week. How can I be better than the year before? My mind says just, just work harder, really. You know, I started doing two days in the off season. And I just, that's just my main focus. How can I be better? And if, you know, awards come after the season, then, then they come. But as long as I feel like I'm better and, you know, I made my teammates better and we were better as a team, then I'm satisfied. You're a dad. You have a young daughter. How has that changed you? It's really like God's treat to you. you know, watching her see, see her grow every day. Every day is something different about her. You know, she learns something or she's growing. I just love it. Watching her wake up, it's like opening up a present every day and you know, you know, coming home to her when she runs up to me. It's the, the best feeling in the world. And it's my motivation as well. So everything I do, you know, it, it's all for her. And it's not about me anymore. She, she's my wife, she's my reason. What has surprised you the most about fatherhood? Um, you get a little soft, especially to the girls. Uh, they soften you up a little bit. But I mean, that just comes with it when you got a baby girl, so I mean, that's how it is, and that's how it is. Sometimes when guys become dads, it changes the way that they are as a player a little bit. They want to be a little more careful. It changes the way they approach things. Do you feel like it's changed you as a football player at all, or not necessarily? Uh, I'm going to say the same. The other thing changed with me, I'm going to go harder. That's all it did. It just motivated me to go harder, and that's my mindset. Now, your daughter's really young right now, but as she watches you play and watches your career unfold, what do you hope she takes away from watching her dad on the field? Just, just hard work each and every day, no shortcuts, never getting complacent, always staying hungry. Respectable, but also you know, being respected. You know, cared about my teammates, care about the people around me, want to be active in the community, help those in need. Always thank God for everything that you have. Because you can be here one day and gone the next. And it was so funny because uh, we finally got her a jersey when she put that jersey on, she was running around the house like <laughs> she was in the football game. <laughs> That's awesome. That's got to make you feel good. She sees her dad and knows what he does. Oh, yeah, definitely. Does she have it. a little stiff arm? She might have gave one to her, uh, her grandmother or her mom <laughs> down, going down the hallway. It's genetic. Yeah, exactly. That was fantastic. If you like Titans radio, more than likely you're a huge fan of Coach Dave McGinnis. When Titans All Access returns, one of our favorite things, Coach Mack as he celebrates 100 games on Titans radio. We'll show you after this. 
Welcome back to Titans All Access, our special Our Favorite Things Holiday Edition with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. We are part of Titans Radio and very proud to be part of such, but we know that you love Coach Dave McGinnis when you listen to Titans Radio. We know that he's probably the reason you listen to Titans Radio. What do you love most about listening to Coach Mack? Oh my gosh, I love so many things about Coach Mack, but I think it's how informative he is while still being entertaining. There's never a dull moment with Coach Mack, but he teaches you about what's happening on the field. He explains it in a way where you were engaged. You feel like you learn a little something, but you also spend a lot of time laughing along the way, which is just great. That's why we love him. Coach Mack celebrating his 100th broadcast Thursday night as the Titans took on the San Francisco 49ers, and it was reason to celebrate because Coach Dave McGinnis is certainly one of our favorite things. Dave McGinnis' arrival with Titans Radio started with misinformation. Coach Mack had been with the Titans for eight seasons as an assistant coach and was immensely popular within the walls of St. Thomas Sports Park. It just, the reach of Titans Radio is immense. When I was coaching here for eight years with Jeff Fisher, you know, I knew Titans Radio was big because I would do, you know, segments with Titans Radio as an assistant coach and as an assistant head coach, but I had no idea the, the scope of it. No one is more interesting or more fun than Coach Mack. There were tears when he departed after the 2011 season. So when news hit that Coach Mack was moving back to Nashville after leaving the Los Angeles Rams, it made total sense to see if he would be interested in doing color commentary on Titans Radio. Just one problem. The word that Coach Mack was moving back to Nashville was, well, incorrect or just flat out wrong. Coach Mack planned to stay in Malibu. That's what he told a Titans official as they visited on the phone. It was going to be a short phone call, right? But when told that he was being offered a chance to join the Titans radio team, Coach Mack jumped in his truck and drove across the country to become a radio guy. Now that I'm not coaching, I can do more with the public. I can do more with the fans. And I really enjoy that aspect of it. And the rest, as they say, is history. After three plus decades as an NFL coach with connections in every NFL city and with his West Texas wit, wisdom and humor, Dave McGinnis, Coach Mack, has become a staple for Titans Radio's listeners over the last five seasons. I think my favorite moment are the playoff wins that we've done together on Titans Radio. I, I, I really enjoyed those two wins at Baltimore and at New England. Those were something special. How much it means not only to the players and the coaches that are out there, how much it means to the entire organization and the entire uh, Titans fan base. For 100 games now, he has informed, entertained, coached up, and connected with Titans fans literally all over the world. Coach Mack, 100 games, wow. Um, I can't believe you put up with Mike Keith that much. I wanna thank you personally for your path that you provide our organization, our team, our players, our coaches, to our fans. You, you keep it real, uh, you're honest, and, and I value not only your professionalism, but your friendship, and I look forward to another 100 more. I know how important a Titans organization is to you and how much you put into what you do for us, so thank you and congrats on 100, and here's to 100 more. Tighten up. Whether it is the Titans organization, Titans radio, sponsors and partners of the team, or Titans fans, the enjoyment of all things Coach Mack is one of life's great Titans pleasures. 100 games down for Dave McGinnis and hopefully many more to come. That was awesome. Coach Mack, we are certainly thankful for you and we know Titans Radio's listeners are too. One of our very favorite things. You know what else is everybody's favorite thing? What's that? Mike Keith's keys. Oh, that's so nice. Yes, and they're coming back on the other side of this break. But we don't have a game. So it's my keys to a great Christmas celebration. This ought to be good. It ought to be good. Stay yeah. with us. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Mike Keith and his keys are the best part of every show. Thank they you. just are. Thank you. But there's no game. There's no game. There's no game. So we had to come up with keys to something different. These keys are presented by visitmyrtlebeach.com. Mike Keith's keys to a great holiday celebration. Key number one, position the TVs where people can see the football games. Sure, you want to be with family and friends and it's exciting, but you want to watch the game. 
Make sure that you position the TVs where people can be involved in a conversation, but still see who's ahead. These games mean a lot this weekend. Keep an eye on them. Position the TVs properly. All right, key number two. Salty snacks. I think salty snacks are the most underrated part of a Christmas celebration. If you have somebody who makes their own party mix, that's absolutely the best. But there are lots of sweets at Christmas time. I'm all for that, especially chocolate. But I really like salty things. Salty snacks, a key to a great holiday celebration. You know I make my own party mix. Do you really? I really do. Absolutely. Yep, okay, key number three. Key number three is just enjoy the weekend. We're thankful for you. You are one of our favorite things. The fact that you tune into Titans All Access every week, the fact that you follow this ball club, that you listen to the OTP, that you listen to the Titans Amy Coach Mac podcast. For all you do, we're thankful for you. Enjoy the weekend, and let's win some more football games down the stretch. You know, Mike, those might have been the greatest keys of the whole season. Salty snacks especially. Salty snacks really got me. I mean, that's an underrated part of any holiday celebration, but especially a very sweet one like Christmas. Well, I've been living a long time. Yeah. So I know these things. That's really good. We hope you've enjoyed this special edition of Titans All Access, our favorite things. Thank you so much for joining us. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and we'll see you next time. It's the little things that make a difference, like taking time to connect with family, helping the new team member feel welcome, well, thanks. and looking out for others. This season, there's something small that makes a big difference. Flu vaccines protect the ones we love. Make a difference. Get your flu vaccine today. Learn more at tn.gov help slash fight flu.